Hi, I'm Melinda Van Fleet, and welcome to the Confident Conversations podcast. I'm a confidence and peak performance coach, best-selling author, and speaker who helps business women develop confidence to believe in themselves, take action, and get results. This podcast shares authentic and transparent, thought-provoking stories, tips, and tools from my experiences, as well as incredible guests, so you can continue to build your confidence and live your best life. Thank you for joining me. Let's get started on this confidence. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's Confident Conversations podcast. I hope you are having an awesome week. So many messages are coming through to me about confidence. It has been just eye-opening. So I felt like just having an open conversation, and I'm calling it Confidence 101. (laughs) You know, everyone has points in their lives where they realize they'd like to build their confidence, level up their confidence, they lack confidence, or they are confident. It's an ongoing process, lesson, and lifelong journey. We are constantly evolving and changing in this process. But what I want you to think about is Are you recognizing that or are you just on autopilot? I was at an amazing event this past weekend, the Worldwide Metaphysical Tribe event held in a small town in Illinois, and it was just beautiful. So many things about it. And yesterday on my plane ride home, I opened my journal and I just journaled bullet points of some hindsights and lessons I had for myself. And they weren't all on the level of, um, how do I put this, like aha moments or awakenings. It was uh, encompassing so many things. It was just encompassing um, maybe something I picked up in a talk, maybe something I noticed about something, and it resonated with me either as a lesson or an opportunity. And it was just really, really cool. And I think I jotted down 15, if I remember correctly, from yesterday. And that was just off the top of my head. But one of the things that seemed to be a reoccurring theme was people that are stuck and not moving forward. And the word confidence came up from them, from their mouse. And I noticed this on many occasions. And I kind of tucked it in the back of my brain. And then this morning and I, this morning, my husband and I had to drive up to Homestead to get my car, which should have been fixed, (laughs) and it wasn't. Let me tell you, that's not a great experience. It's not a great experience when I confidently know that I was very strategic about planning the whole car drop-off around my crazy schedule considering they don't have cars to borrow right now, because I guess there's a shortage on ships. And even when you borrow a car, there's a daily mileage limit on borrowing the car. And I'm really busy. I have a lot going on for this next month. But I needed to get something fixed on my car while it was still covered under powertrain warranty. So hence the dilemma. I don't want to be driving the car and putting on miles and then not being able to get this fixed under my warranty. So, you know, sometimes too, (laughs) you have to confidently stand up for yourself when someone else has not delivered on something that should have been delivered, was texted to you that it was going to be done on Friday, so you could easily pick it up Monday morning at 9, which was the agreed upon time, and that didn't happen either. So hence, I lost my confidence in this person that works at the Chevy dealer in Homestead. So confidence appears in so many different ways, right? So as I mentioned, I have the the women that I was speaking to over the weekend that, you know, confidently wish to move forward in their business and life and they're not taking those risks or actions. Then I have me losing confidence with the car dealer and me confidently standing up for myself and saying, you guys promised and you even texted me that it was going to be done and that didn't happen. And then you didn't even give me the heads up this morning before I drove all the way up here. That's confidence in myself and standing up for myself and what I know to be correct and true. 
And then my husband and I were talking on the way back home, trying to keep our cool and composure because now I've also inconvenienced him with this whole car situation and he's very busy. And we ended up talking about kids and kids having confidence or not having confidence. And he took a really, really cute five-year-old on a charter over the weekend when I was gone. And that kid, he said, was amazing. So much confidence. And I also refer to my nieces who have come into their own. Sienna, now that she's kind of discovered things that she likes in the metaphysical world, and Sydney with her dance, they've built a lot of confidence. Like, how does it happen with people, right? Is it genetic? Is it human design, which is something I uh, have talked about in my other podcasts and I use as part of my coaching practice and I really believe in? Is it what's going on around us? Is it our surroundings? Is it getting sucked into social media or YouTube and not really being able to get yourself out of that and clear a way or a path to get on some type of track to doing the things you need to do in order to build your confidence and move forward? What is it? What is that secret sauce? You know, as a coach, I I help people on this, but at the same time, you also have to be self-led. I've spoken with many people, especially young adults, and give them all the advice in the world, sometimes for pro bono, for free, and then they don't do anything. So there is an aspect, too, that you have to be self-led. And where does that come from? It's really something to think about. And it's really something for you to think about where you are at. Are there things that you are looking to build your confidence in? Is it working at your job? Is it asking for a promotion? Is it building a business? Is it getting on social media? Is it something with your family or your kids or your spouse or partner? You know, what is it? And then why haven't you done it? What's holding you back? Because Listening to podcasts or reading a book or, like I said, working with a coach, none of that's going to matter until you can also lead yourself and do the work. Because if you hired me for a coach, I, I can give you all the advice and goodness and love and support and be your biggest cheerleader and all the ideas and things that I know I have done to move forward in my life and my husband has done and I've seen other people do. Every single tip and tool. It's open. It's there. I'm, I'm there for you. But you also have to do it. And I can't make you do that. Your spouse or partner can't make you do that. You can't make your kids do that. So where does that come from? It's your desire. It's your why. Is your why strong enough that it's going to propel you to the next level? to take that action, to learn, to grow, to evolve in whatever it is. So I really want you to think about that today. Are you working towards something? Most people are. Most people are working towards something, even if it's trying to keep your house cleaner, right? That's how I feel today after coming home after a week. It's like, oh, I want to be able to clean, but I can't yet because I have this big presentation on Thursday. So I have to prioritize cleaning for after that, but I know my why, right? I know my why. I know my why on why I wouldn't confidently have anyone in my house right now because I need to clean it, but I know why I'm not doing it yet. And it's because I want to wrap up getting my presentation ready for Thursday because I'm speaking to the CFSA Association up in Jupiter, which is um, really excited about this opportunity. But at least I know my why, right? I know it. I know it. So then I can sit with it. I can be at peace in it. And then I can, when I get home after my trip, then I can clean my house top to bottom. Because when I clean my house, I go kind of crazy and I I don't stop. I kind of get every little nook and cranny. So it becomes a project. But think about what you are looking to build your confidence in and what's holding you back. And what you can do to shift that mindset and move forward and make your why stronger so you can get there. 
So I hope you like this podcast. I hope it makes you think that is my intention, especially if you have children. It is just, you know, I said to my husband, Ryan, I said, I feel like it's a pandemic that is more, how do I put this, more serious in a way, and please understand what I'm trying to say here, than a disease because it's their life forever. If they're not motivated, if they don't have a why, if they don't have parents guiding them, if their parents are just coming home at the end of the day and they're exhausted and they don't want to deal with anything because they're tired and they're like, oh, the kids will just be the kids. Well, what's going to happen in five years? What's going to happen in 10 years? They might need a little guidance from you if you're a parent. So think about that too. Think about how are you guiding your ship in your life with confidence. So you may be someone that has a lot of confidence, but are you helping others build their confidence as well? Because we can all help each other. We can all share and we can all help each other with our experiences, our lessons, our life stories, and even just listening. Listening is so important and letting someone know that they are not alone. So my link for my course that I think I'm going to move out a week, I actually am because I'm going to do a one day free mastermind on money mindset to kick it off because I did not make money a module in this new course. It's infused, but again, I see it. I hear it. I hear people struggle with, I can't charge for that. I don't feel like I should charge for that. And there's so much wrapped up in that. And I have so many stories of my husband and I and different clients and things I have seen over the years that um, can really help you shift your mindset around money. So at least when you're creating content and you're working on your business, if you're an online speaker, network marketer, coach, or entrepreneur, your mindset is in a good place. It doesn't mean you need to be greedy, greedy. That's not what I'm saying. And I'm not saying you have to be obnoxious like some people could be online, I'm sure. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying money is energy and you're worthy of that. So we're going to talk about that in a free mastermind first before I start my co- my course. So I'm pushing everything out just like a week. So I will put the information in the show notes. Check it out. I would love to hear from you. Please connect with me. And until next week, I hope this podcast builds your confidence. Thank you for listening and sharing.